welcome everyone. It's nice to see you here. My name is Vicki Turcott. I'm the Assistant Director for Support Services at the Chelmsford Library. And tonight I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about a grant program that we're running. Before I get started with that though, I do need to tell you that this program is made possible through federal funds provided by the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences as administered, excuse me, services as administered by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. That's official wording I have to um, say since this is a grant uh, funded program. So welcome. I'd like to talk about a grant that we were recently awarded. Um, to help us bring senior or health information to seniors in the town where they are. It's called On the Road to Healthy Senior Living, and it involves a couple of initiatives. One way to bring information directly to the seniors is to partner with other groups in town, such as the Chelmsford Housing Department, the Senior Center, Chelmsford Telemedia, uh, Elder Services of Merrimack Valley, and more to offer programs on health topics of interest to seniors and their caregivers. These topics, um, the programs will be on the following topics, finding health information in Chelmsford, which is tonight the first program, dementia, including help for caregivers, sex education and sexuality, death and dying, mental health care and suicide prevention, and working and volunteering as a senior. Programs will be provided live via Zoom. We'll try to have a regular schedule on those and we'll post more information about that as it comes together. Um, they'll be also recorded to be replayed um, both from our own website and Chelmsford Telemedia. And hopefully we will be able to run them during the senior hours on Chelmsford Telemedia. So if you have that, you should be able to see them even if you do miss them live. Another way we're going to bring information to our seniors is through using our pop-up library. You may have seen information about that. It's kind of a mini bookmobile. It's very colorful. And our goal is to bring it to the senior center and senior housing and um, assisted living facilities like that in town so that people can borrow library books and a lot of other materials that we are purchasing just to meet the health needs of seniors. Um, with grant funds, we have started purchasing some new materials, starting with a collection of health titles in large print, and these are available now, and they include things like how to be a patient. I'm just adjusting this so I can see myself. How to be a patient, is that reversed? It's fine. Good, terrific, thank you. Um, this one, successful aging. And this one, maximize your Medicare and many other health topics. And we will be adding to that as the year goes on. You don't have to wait for the pop-up library to come and visit you. Hopefully um, we'll be able to get started as the months get warmer and as COVID subsides. Um, you can borrow those things now by coming to the library and I'll talk about that in just a minute. The next thing we have are these items called launch pads. This is a launch pad. It is a self-contained tablet, so you don't need the internet to use it. And it is, um, we have them on many different topics. This particular one is um, general topics, general brain busters, including things like uh, a retro arcade, some art puzzles, oh goodness hidden objects where you can see a scene and they'll show you objects and you can find them in the scene. So we have these on many topics, including um, crossword puzzles. Um, oh, this one's playing music right now. I'm gonna shut that off. Um, so all kinds of things available to help you stimulate your brain. All right. Um, we also have something called a play away. These are self-contained audiobooks that we have purchased on many topics. This one happens to be um, a meditation to help you manage diabetes. In this little object is an entire audiobook. All you need is a pair of headphones like this or earbuds as you may have already. You plug them into this and then you control the play away with 
the, all the buttons right here. You can take it with you. Uh, if you have speakers, you can plug it into speakers, but it's all self-contained. So no messing with um, CDs or CD players. It's all in here. And we have other things like the 30-day heart tune-up and your health, your decisions. Now, these things are all available, as I said, right now, even if the pop-up library can't get to you, you can get these items by calling us, letting us know what you're interested in. We will put them aside for you, place them on hold for you. You can come to the library, you can come in and pick them up if you want, or you can call us from the parking lot and use our curbside delivery. You would come to the parking lot, call us, we'll check the items out to you, put them in a paper bag and bring them outside to you, put them on a table and you can pick those up and take them home. So you don't have to come into the library if you would rather not. So all those things are available. Um, and you can always send someone to pick those items up for you if you are unable to get there yourself. So that's some information about our grant. So stay tuned, look for more programs as they get posted. Uh, we've got one coming up in February on the 17th and it's called Savvy Caregivers. And it's an information session about a possible upcoming program to assist caregivers of family members or friends with dementia, Alzheimer's, that kind of um, illness that they need, may need help with. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, I am gonna turn this over to Danny Lycanchin. He is our head of reference and he is gonna give you some information about how to find more information uh, in the library, in town and on the web. Go ahead, Danny. Um, so real quick here, I'm just gonna share my screen because I've got a uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'm Danny Lycanchin. I'm the head of the reference department here at the library. And, uh, you know, we help people answer questions and find information and that sort of thing. And so, you know, health topics are something that comes up quite frequently. Um, people are looking for information about um, various things to do with health. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over a little bit of the library's resources and then uh, some local and state and even some um, larger overall like national resources too. Most of this is going to be online. Um, so let's get started. So uh, first of all, library resources. Um, we have a ton of online resources that are available for free from home with your library card. Uh, and you can access those through our website, chumpswordlibrary.org. There's kind of a simple three-step process to get to anything. Like if you're looking for consumer reports, for example, um, you could just go to chumpswordlibrary.org, click on that orange research tab, and then there's a drop-down menu there and everything is alphabetical by name, so you would you would find find it there. So in a moment when we talk about some library resources, all of them are kind of accessed right in here. Um, you can do that um, with your card. And we do have more resources online. I also want to point out that all of the resources that we're going to talk about today are on our health and wellness subject guide on the website. Um, we also we can email this PowerPoint presentation to you after if you if you would like that as well. Um, you can also find many more resources on our website for a variety of subjects. All of those subjects that are listed there, we have them kind of broken out. You know, all the resources are kind of um, broken out by those subjects as well. So if you know, for example, you're looking for genealogy stuff, you can just click on those genealogy and obituaries and you'll get all of our resources that are related to that topic. We try to make it easy. Um, there is also, you'll see that big red box that points at the seniors. Um, tab on that little blue menu there. There are some pages there that have specific resources for seniors. So that's another good place to check out um, if you're on our website. All right, so let's talk about print library resources real quick. Um, we recently started a Spark collection. Uh, this is located in the library's large print room. The Spark collection has things that are for people who are experiencing changes in memory or who are living with dementia or their caretakers. So you'll find information about um, those sorts of uh, health topics in that collection, but you'll also find things like reminiscence kits or other materials that are, are um, you know, are the, are the launch pads in there, Vicki, or are the launch pads in the Spark collection? Yeah, so the launch pads that Vicki was talking about that help stimulate, you know, your, your, your brain and doing the crosswords and things like that, we put those into the, into the Spark collection too. Um, uh, the other thing is 
our nonfiction collection downstairs. The Dewey call numbers generally will be in the 600 for, 600s for health topics, you know, 612 to 619 contain like dieting and exercise and, and several medical books um, on many health conditions. We do have a list of recommended titles that we have made. Uh, that is available at the library. We can we can give you a print copy of that, or you can get it. Did, it's posted into the event. Um, did it also get emailed to people, Vicki? I will email it afterwards. Okay, so we can email that. We'll email that afterwards. All right. So onward to the online resources. So these are some library resources that we we make available with uh, your library card. So first of all, something a little fun. Uh, if you if you like food or cooking, we have two databases: A to Z Food America, which is you know American regional cuisine, and also A to Z World Food, which is uh, information on uh, cuisines for over 200 different countries around the world. You'll find things like recipes in there, and information about the ingredients that are used in those recipes, um, and it's just a it's it, there's a lot of information in there um, about food, just generally speaking. Um, next one up is Health and Wellness Resource Center. This is, um, this is a good reference resource for things like uh, diseases or disorders. They have alternative medicine. They have a lot of, a lot of uh, information in there, including um, journal articles and things like that. So if you're doing any sort of research on a health topic, this is a good, good stop uh, to make. Um, any Massachusetts library card can, can use this resource. It doesn't just have to be a Chelmsford card. Um, and then last of all, for our, our online resources, we have access to uh, Universal Class, which offers over, free, over 500 free online courses. Uh, I picked out some that might be of interest to seniors here. So uh, Advocacy for Elderly Patients, Aging and Long-Term Care 101, uh, Alzheimer's Disease uh, 101, those sorts of things. But there's over 500 courses in here. If you want to learn to bake a pie, they have a course for that in, in, in Universal Class. Um, if you'd like to do yoga or like engage in some wellness activities, they have courses for meditation and things like that in there as well. Um, so there's a lot in there. You know, anything that you would like to like, would like to learn, um, take a look because there might be something in there. And they are full courses uh, online for free. If you would like to earn continuing education credits, you can do that through them as well. Okay, so this brings us to the Town of Chelmsford resources. Um, obviously the Senior Center, we'll get to them in a second, but Jen Melanson, I'm not sure if, if you know of her or not, but if you don't, you do now. Uh, Jen Melanson is our Community Service Coordinator. Uh, right now, among many other things that she does uh, to help people in the town, She's helping with fuel assistance applications and SNAP food stamp applications. She told me that over 50% of eligible seniors don't use the SNAP benefits. Uh, if you would like to get involved in that, you can contact her by phone, email, or through their Facebook page, the Community Services Facebook page. Um, those two things are not the only things that Jen does. If you're looking for, you know, assisted living facilities and you contact her, she'll help you, you know, navigate that. Um, if you, if you, if you need a need transportation or things like that, she'll help you find the local transportation. She has helped seniors before find people who can shovel out their driveways or, or plow them out. Um, so those those are sorts of some of the sorts of things that she does. But she's kind of a jack of all trades, um, kind of helping people in the town. Um, Chelmsford Senior Center uh, obviously is is a, a fantastic resource for the town. The building is closed right now, but they have been offering a, a wide variety of services still. Um, call in bingo, the Meals on Wheels for people who are uh, unable to leave their homes right now. Um, it continues. They are helping with transportation as well, um, the local transportation programs. And then they're still lending some medical equipment, not all of it that they were before, but some of it. Um, and then they are also running numerous virtual programs. You'll find library virtual programs and also senior center virtual programs. Um, they've had some great services, so definitely a resource worth looking at. So moving up uh, a little bit to the state resources, uh, mass.gov has downloadable lists of all certified assisted living facilities in the state. So if you just wanna know what's out there and what's certified, uh, that's a great starting point. Um, you can, I think they, when you get that list, you can sort it by community, but it might be a little tricky because it's, it's a PDF, um, but you can certainly search it for, for specific communities. Um, 
this is a great way to also check the cert the certification of an assisted living facility that you're looking looking at maybe and want to make sure that it's legitimate. Um, speaking of that, Mass Board of Registration in Medicine also maintains a website where you can check physician profiles, find nearby physicians, verify their credentials. Um, all of that information is available online. You just have to go through their their web portal, uh, basically. So that's the second resource here. And then uh, third of all is Shine. Um, the Shine program is free health insurance counseling to all Massachusetts residents with Medicare or their caregivers. Uh, this is a great resource. If you have Medicare and you have any questions about it, you can find a Shine counselor um, by calling Mass Options. Uh, they can help you out. That's that's what they're there for. Some nonprofit organizations. Vicki already mentioned Elder Services of Merrimack Valley. I don't have enough space in this entire PowerPoint to list all the services that Elder Services of Merrimack Valley provides. They have so many services. Um, they also put out, I want to draw attention to a specific resource that they have, the Green Book, which is a guide to resources and topics and can point you in the direction of more agencies, organizations, and help on those specific topics. That is available online through their website. We have a print copy in the library's nonfiction section. Uh, we also link to it on our website. So it's, it's pretty easy to get a hold of if you're looking for it. Um, but if you're looking for kind of like a directory of, of topics and like where you can find more information about those topics, that's, that's a great resource. Um, Elder Services of Merrimack Valley has, has basically everything, um, everything that you could, that you could wish for in a, in a elder services organization. Um, the next organization is Home, Homeowner Options for Massachusetts Elders, HOME for short. Uh, they're a nonprofit organization. They don't charge fees to their clients. Uh, their mission is to help seniors avoid foreclosures and age in place successfully. They do have some eligibility requirements. You can check those on their website or give them a call and, and they'll walk you through it. Um, and then the third resource on, on the nonprofit side here is uh, Mass Senior Care. Um, this, is a, this is an or organization that um, has healthcare services listed and facilities and you can find them and where they are and um, and find some like rating information about them on that website. Mental health resources. Uh, the first one here, call to talk. This is a, a primary purpose is like a 24 seven crisis support line. Um, I'm drawing attention to it because they also offer a telecheck service. So you can sign up for this service and um, they will have trained professionals, they'll have trained staff contact you, you know, every week or so to provide support or conversation uh, after major life changing events. Um, so this is a great service if you if you just feel like you need somebody to talk to, um, you know, just regularly and, and um, they, they can support people in that way. Um, Call to Talk is operated by the United Way of Tri-County. Um, and their number is right on the screen there, but they also have a website and um, you can find out more about them on their website as well. Uh, the Elder Abuse Hotline is, uh, is a 24 seven hotline to report the abuse uh, or neglect of an elder um, or uh, seniors, uh, 65 plus. Uh, for, nur for nursing home or hospital abuse, they want you to contact the Department of Public Health. And if there's an emergency, contact 911 or the local police. But if you, if you suspect that there is abuse or neglect going on, uh, the Elder Abuse Hotline is certainly available. Um, that's a that's a great resource as well. Uh, this last one, William James Interface Referral Service, is is probably the best one on the list here. So, um, what they do is they match callers with licensed mental health providers, and usually they uh, they're able to do that um, within two weeks of you calling the uh, the service. Uh, they are not a crisis support line. If you're having a crisis, call something like Call to Talk uh, instead. But if you call the William James Interface Interface Referral Service. Uh, what they can do for you is, you know, assess your needs, uh, figure out what kind of provider you need, uh, what your insurance covers, and then match you with licensed people in your area. Uh, so if you're looking for referrals, that's exactly what they do. Um, it's a great resource. So online and national resources. Um, choosing Wisely right here, this first one, they are an organization whose mission is to spur conversations about what is medically necessary. Uh, they assist patients in avoiding those unnecessary procedures by giving you information about those those medical procedures and whether or not you know it's it's truly medically necessary or not. So if you have you know questions, you may seek the second opinion of a doctor. You may also you know do a little research on your own. 
this is a this is a place that you could start kind of doing doing a little bit of that research on your own. Um, Medline Plus. Medline Plus is uh, what I recommend to people who like to use WebMD. Um, WebMD is um, not 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 super uh, authoritative, but Medline Plus is run by the National Institutes of Health. It provides high quality health and wellness information on just about any health topic that you can that you can. <laughs> And uh, that's the one that I that I go to when I have medical questions that come into the library. I start at Medline Plus usually, um, rather than Google because Google gives you a pretty wide variety of results. Usually not so good. Um, so for me, this is the starting point. If you're going to start doing research from health topics online, start at Medline Plus. Please don't start with Google. <laughs> um, Skinsight.com. If you have you know a skin condition or a rash or um, something on your skin that you're that you don't know what it is skin Sight has a rash finder they have accurate images of skin conditions they're not a substitute for a physician you should see a doctor if you have any health concerns about your own body um, but what i like about skin Sight is that they are not nearly as alarming as doing an internet search on google for example um, if you've ever googled any sort of skin condition on uh, skin condition on on google what you've gotten back was probably very alarming um, skin site kind of walks you through, you know, what you've got, what it looks like, and shows you different pictures and 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 that sort of thing. It's more it's more reasonable, I think. Um, web poison control is the last one here. They are a, vo a virtual poison control center. Um, they you, they can be used in an emergency. They'll act as a guide to kind of like guide you through what happened, what you may have been exposed to, that sort of thing. It's always good to call a real poison control center too. Uh, what I really like about web poison control is that they have a lot of information about poisonings and about toxins right on that website. And they also have a pill identifier. So for example, if you have a pill or find a pill on the ground, you don't know what it is, they have an identifier that can help you figure out exactly what that is. Okay, and so that's kind of my quick tour of lots of resources. Um, our contact information is also in here, Vicki's contact information and mine. If you have any further questions or additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out, um, especially to the reference desk here. That's what we do. That's what we like to do. So, you know, we like those we like those questions that that send us looking for looking for information. All right. Thank you very much, Danny. That was um, very educational. A lot of information. We will be glad to send out the um, PowerPoint program to anyone who would like to have it, or I'll just automatically send it as well as our uh, document listing other resources that we have in the library. A couple of things that I thought about while I was listening to Danny is uh, on our regular website. I don't think you mentioned that we just have the senior section on our main website. You click on seniors, there's a lot of information under there. Um, all these things Danny talked about in, and more are listed there. Another service that we offer right now, uh, we are lending tablets, very similar to an iPad. They're actually called a G-Pad. Um, you can borrow those. We have regular ones that go out for one week and they can be renewed a couple of times if no one's waiting. We also have a special set that was done through a separate grant program um, for seniors. And those can go out for up to nine weeks there is a waiting list on those, but if you're interested in borrowing one of those, we can put you on the waiting list. In the meantime, you can try one of the short-term ones. By all means, give me a call. I will uh, include all of our contact information when we send out the email with further information. So um, that is a possibility for more help. And as Danny said, call the reference desk. They're always happy to help. Wonderful people work at the reference desk can find you anything you're looking for. If you need help with the website, call us while you're on it. They can direct you. Um, they can really help you with all kinds of things. Um, right now, I'd like to open it up if there are any questions, if anybody has anything. There's a couple of ways that you can ask questions. Oh, my God, you can <laughs> unmute and ask a question, or you can type it into the chat feature, which is at the bottom of your Zoom. So I'm going to unmute. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Diane? Yes. Um, the spot collection that you mentioned that's in the lodge type part of the library, 
if is it online? Could I see what's there online? Those items are in the catalog. Um, you can find them by searching for Launchpad or searching for um, Memory Kit. Because um, we have little kits that go out, they have flashcards in them that just prompt memories. Um, you'd have to see one to see what it's like. I thought the Spark collection was different things. Uh, well, it's the launch pads as well and the memory oh. kits. Yeah, okay. it's both of those things. Um, and of course, we have all the large print books in that area, along with um, um, puzzles. We lend out jigsaw puzzles for people who want to borrow them. So that's another little collection that we have that's very popular with seniors. Are there any more questions? Cheryl? So the flashcards would be like, for example, uh, a word and a picture or, or something to that sort? Right, so for instance, we have one that is about um, dogs. Okay. And so it would be a set of cards and it would have an image of a dog maybe running through a field. And the idea is you share it with someone mm -hmm. um, who perhaps has dementia or whatever, and it will jog their memory and help them think of memories that you can then talk about and share. Mm -hmm. okay. kind of a for storytelling, you know, oh, those yeah. memories and stories. Right. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I thank you very much for joining us. I will send out that information along with our contact information. And um, if you have any other needs, please let us know. Thank you thank very you. much. Very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank, -bye. thank you. Thank you. Most people, when they think of the library, they just think of books or librarians that wear glasses and like buns and say shh a lot. But really the library is a much different place from how it was even five years ago. We have amazing collections. We offer movies and CDs and video games. And we also have amazing programming here. For the youngest kids, we have a lot of story times. I think the library has so much to offer. We do a lot of craft programs as well. And then for older kids, we have a book talk club, Snacks in the Stacks, where we give you snacks and you get to talk about whatever you're reading. We've worked with the Special Education Parent Advisory Council to develop a whole collection for parents who have children with special needs. Everybody should know that the library is here for them. Our teen volunteers help us out with running all of our children's programs. They help set up supplies, they help give instruction, they help um, engage with the kids and with parents. We're also really excited to announce that we are getting our mobile library this fall. So we'll be able to bring books to folks who might not be able to come in here and get some books. Chelmsford Public Library is hugely important in this community. That library doesn't belong to the librarians, it belongs to the community. I hope everybody comes to the library because it's a great place to be. Oh no, we've got to go through it!